from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Splunk's Dot Conference 2015. This is theCUBE, our flagship program from SiliconANGLE Media, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host this week, George Gilbert, Chief Analyst at Big Data for Wikibon. And our next guest is Emilio Umioka, VP of Global Partners at Splunk. Welcome to theCUBE. Oh, thank Great you very to much. See you. Very happy to be here. So, um, you know, we had a great conversation earlier on our kickoff around, you know, the growth, and my comment to George was, how tall can Splunk be? Meaning, you know, it's not a startup anymore, even though you act like a startup in, in principle and in culture, you're one of the big players at the table now. And you got big partnerships, Cisco, Palo Alto Networks, so big names you're working with, and you're global. That's so, right. that's a big success story, but yet there's so much more you could do, so talk about for us, lay out the ecosystem and partner map for you. Channels, sales, go to market, technology partners. You lay out the, the, the 101 map of what's going on with the Splunk's ecosystem. No, oh, excellent. And um, Conf, for us, is an important event. We have more than 800 partners participating here. At the Source Pavilion, we have more than 60 partners with kiosks here showing and demonstrating their solutions. So I'm responsible for worldwide partners traditional bars, distribution, resellers, technology alliances, alliances, strategic alliances, OEM, system integrators, and service providers. So a big range of uh, go-to-market motions that we have. So I know there's a lot of big names here. Um, how is that affecting your sales motion? Obviously, you have a great installed base of clients, but there's a pressure to get more, right? Well, it's a combination between uh, getting the right partners uh, so if you look at our overall partner strategy, it's based on main, uh, three main priorities. One is to focus, focus on the key partners that can invest and grow with us. Second one is to drive enablement, how we transfer knowledge, technical sales and marketing knowledge at scale to our partners. And the third pillar for our strategy is how we built the right trust between our own sales teams and our partner sales teams. So I got to ask you a question, because one of the things I'm fascinated with living in Silicon Valley is the, the bubble mentality of buying sales. You pay $2 for $1 of sales, that's a cost per order dollar. Two, net minus one, it's not good. But indirect sales has been a real big part of the enterprise sales motion, indirect and direct. Right. Um, having a good channel and a good partner strategy can give you increased profitability. Could you share with us your thoughts on that? Because that seems to be an area where you have good synergy with channel partners, where they can add value on top of Splunk. Um, what's the latest there and what's the trend? So the key important thing for us is how we expand our coverage, leveraging our channel partners. So from a channel motion perspective, building the right capacity model is quite important. If you go back to what the way Godfrey phrases it, it's, it's not about the pie, but what's the size of the pie and what's the size of each slice of the pie? Is that enough money for our partners to make on each slice of the pies? So looking at specifically at some of the announcements we've made in terms of market groups, buying centers, so you go at IT ops, security, it's having the right partner profile for that specific solution that we need to address, uh, looking at our customer needs. So building the partner capacity model has been a key component for us. And the second pillar for that approach is how we reward value that yeah. partners are bringing to us and to our customers. So you have pre-existing markets and green fields. Talk about the dynamic between the two because some of these new markets like IOT, Internet of Things, really it could be a nice green field, yet in other established markets, there's some partnering that has a hierarchy and or your role in the sale and or component could be big, but, but the pie's so big that you won't Correct. go direct. And that's where the uh, the green field, in, in some cases like IOT, having a very strong team that can drive the technology alliances, you know, building alliances. I know you interviewed Syncsort, for example, here. Mm -hmm. you know, really building solutions that we can either meet in the channel type of approach or meet at a customer site. But having the right um, definition of what partners we need for each specific green field is a key component for us. Along those lines, do you have rules of engagement for when you meet at the partner versus when you meet at the customer? You know, is that done by the, the type of solution or is it done by the geography? 
Um, yeah, so clear, clear rules of engagement is a main component for our third pillar, which is building trust. So when you look at our rules of engagement, it's based on some of the errors you address. Like what sort of uh, account segmentation? Is it a major account, enterprise account, a territory account? Is it in the US, outside the US? Do we have the right partner capability and right go-to-market motion in that sense? And do we have the right solution partners that can come and you know, really build up some of those solutions we need to address? To follow on that last yes. point on solution partners, so we've heard from many people that Splunk is you know, growing up from this sort of log analysis and visualization tool to an IT ops platform. What type of solutions are some of your partners building on that platform and how do you go to market with them and against whom? Well, again, the, the market becomes very broad when we're going to new markets like business analytics or IoT. So one of the key things that we did from a developer ecosystem perspective, we launched SDKs, we launched developer frameworks, we provided sandboxes so developers could start developing some additional solutions. So if you see some of our, for example, some of our Korean ISVs on the way they're really driving automation on IoT, on manufacturing, on semiconductor, or in Asia Pacific and Hong Kong, and the way some of our partners are building applications to monitor traffic of the Hong Kong port. So they're a very, very vanguard approach to developing uh, new solutions that in the past, we were not able even to visualize that could be possible. And I, I, what in, in particular, the, the area that I'm most interested in is IT operations, just because it's becoming so critical for the new application landscape, which is so multi-vendor, you know, you know, it's breaking apart into thousands of microservices. Is that, does that take a, a huge amount of new value add on top of the platform? And, and so, you know, what are the price points compared to just the generic platform? No, well, I think from uh, IT operations, uh, Cisco is one of our key uh, partners that we have, strategic partners, and we're working very closely together with their data center team in order to really build solutions within their UCS usage. And what we're seeing is just the, the synergy that we are creating in terms of obtaining this source, these different sources of information and aggregating them and producing some business insights. So partners are really stepping up on, on that approach. So um, what's your take on the news today? I see the IT service intelligence is big news. Yes. And we're hearing great reviews from the folks here. How is that going to render itself in your world with partners? Can you share the strategy there? Because it seems to be very partner friendly. Well, and you guys are partner friendly to begin with, yes. and also developer friendly. Yeah, so very excited. I mean, our, our partners, we had uh, two advisory councils uh, yesterday, one for the Americas and one for the EMEA, where we share some of the product roadmap with our partners. I mean, they're extremely excited about opportunities to really expand their footprint with their, their accounts. So we're driving now the right technical enablement, the right sales enablement, the marketing enablement piece. So they're ready to go and capture that opportunity. But they're seeing it. And everybody was so excited this morning uh, by, the, by the launch of the new product. What's going on in Asia Pacific? I know that's a big part that you're covering was your previous assignment and had a great career. Uh, in Asia Pacific, uh, now you're global and got to be hired, and yes. you're close, so to speak. Yeah. You're talking to a bunch of candidates. I'm sure you help your yeah. <laughs> your workload go down a little bit, but that's your territory, and yeah. there's been a lot of growth there, a lot of uncertainty financially. We saw the China crisis. How is that? What, what's going on in Asia Pacific? Growth is there, obviously, still the big numbers. Oh yes, Ex I mean excellent growth and, and and opportunity there. So if you look at some of the most mature markets like Japan and Australia some of the use cases that are coming, and some of the, the, the building up of the partner ecosystem uh, through managed service providers, through some of the system integrators, they're beginning to build Splunk into their practices. So going much higher in, in some of the accounts where we were starting from bottoms up, now we have an approach where we can cover the account on several areas. A big, big strong investment in government continues to be a very strong uh, vertical for us telcos as well, financial services, and move to the cloud, which is another component that um, you probably saw this morning yeah. on the announcement. I mean, uh, Splunk being a great solution for being a hybrid solution, if you want, 
whether you want to put your your data in the cloud or yeah. on-premise or both, and you can do search on both. I love both a great sides. guest like yourself who can just lead into my next question without me even asking it. <laughs> so I brought up the Asia uh, uh, Pacific comment really in context of the cloud. Yes. It's a global reach. You guys have a global reach. It's a big story with Splunk as you guys grow, but cloud brings up the question, global reach is a benefit, but also if you're not architected properly, it could be a pain in the butt because there's a lot of different jurisdictional issues of with being global reach. What are some of those things that you guys have done to have a global consumption contract. Yes. That's a really kind of a big deal. Not, people, not many people talk about it, but yep. it's important. It's almost table stakes now. And again, it, it varies. It varies by, uh, by specifically by data sovereignty laws that we have in some of the countries where you need to keep some data on data centers that are located in your country and some data, data that can be exported. But I think the beauty of Splunk is that you can have a hybrid solution. We don't, we're about the customer choice, whether the customer wants to have everything in the cloud, everything on-prem, on some pieces of the data in the cloud and some, some pieces on-prem. And being able to search on both directions. We well, really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Share with the folks out there who are watching this year's .com. What's the big uh, story in your mind? What's the vibe? What's the feeling this year, vis-a-vis -vis last year or other years? What's the notable? top three things? Well, amazing, amazing um, presence. I would say 4,000 people versus last year. The amazing amount of partners that we have, 800 partners, so a good chunk of them here. More than 60 partners sponsoring the uh, Source Pavilion and some big launches in enterprise on ITSI and cloud. And I mean, the company is very exciting. It really positioned itself very strongly to become the machine data uh, platform. For, for the industry. One of the, my final question for you is one of the um, partner conversations we always hear yes. is, you know, channel this, indirect, good leverage. It's always, having a partner strategy always looks good on paper. Yeah. Because the numbers work. But it's an economic game. The product has to be good. You guys have good software, so check that. Yeah. Economics, if people are making money in the, in the partner ecosystem, that shows some vi vibrant success. Right. How are your? How do you guys do in that regard? You guys are feeling good about the, the economics of the, of the of the partners. Everyone's winning. Can you give some color and insight yeah, to that? Of course, of course. And and you touch on a few things. And this is what we addressed, for example, on the advisory council that we had yesterday. Partners are here to know if they're investing on the right company, investing on the right technology. And you know, they came out very excited, you know, from yeah. yesterday and today. And that's one key component. Am I investing on the right technology? Can I make my business profitable and sustainable for the next few years if I invest on that technology? And what are the key areas that I need to invest ahead of time in terms of technical enablement to be ready to capture that opportunity? And what we have done in the last year or so, we've shifted our model with the introduction of Partner Plus, which is our partner program, to really reward the, the partners that are bringing value to the equation. So you see partners you are- wrapping services around your Wrapping product. services, putting technical resources, investing on certification, you know, really building together with us a growth plan. I mean, that's what we're seeing. So if, if you look, for example, in the, in the US, the top 30 partners that we track are going at twice the rate that the company is growing. Well, you guys, that, that is a key component for that. You're certainly a senior veteran in the industry in terms of the channel and partner ecosystems. So I'd like you to take the last comment to share with the folks watching, maybe some younger managers growing up and looking at this new normal cloud. What does it take for a product to be partner friendly? Channel partner and or technology partner. What are the key attributes in today's modern era? And it's moving. If you look at the cloud, you know some of the cloud is mostly related to services. It's the, the way the business is evolving from a um, upfront payment or to recurring payment, on the way you manage cash flow, on the way you invest on, on the right technology. I understand, make sure you, as a partner, if you're building your own company, make sure you're investing on the right technology because it's very hard to have sustainable growth and profitable, yeah. being profitable. And it should be an enabling it. technology. Exactly, exactly. And as, as we become more and more the platform, you know, you'll see yeah. verticals coming in, you see application coming in, and a huge opportunity for our all the ecosystem to be very profitable. Emilio, thank you so much. Obviously, and with open source, ecosystem is a key thing, but certainly on a money-making basis, certainly that's good. it's healthy to have that as well. Thank you for sharing the data. No, thank you very much for the invitation. All right, this is theCUBE. We are sharing the data on the ecosystem partner network here at Splunk.com. We'll be right back with more after this short break.